So more than half a million New York City public school students remain in remote learning despite the city's best efforts to get those kids back in the classroom. Yeah, it's certainly been a week since more than 50,000 students returned to school for in-person learning. This morning we were checking in with schools Chancellor Misha Ross Porter to see how that first week went and what's in store for the rest of the school year. And the Chancellor joining us now live with the very latest. Good morning to you. Thanks for being here so early. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Of course. So let's begin with what we saw out there last week, right? Welcoming the students back to school for in-person learning. How did that first week go? Were there any kinks? No, it was a great week back, and I think the most exciting thing was to welcome students back, have their teachers welcome them back. They were so excited to be back in classrooms. You know, as a mom, the first day of school, we've had many first days this year. There's always a crying baby about going back to school, but this year the tears were tears of joys about about being back in school. So I'm really excited about that. Oh, that's so good to hear because as a mom, I know that's one of the heartbreaking parts of school, right? To send them off and they're crying. You're like, no, this is supposed to be a happy time. But let me ask you, Chancellor, we are hearing some parents really complaining about students being back in person, but their teacher is still on Zoom teaching remotely. So what's being done about that? So we're really working to ensure that when students are in school, that there is an adult in contact with them, a loving, caring adult to help them through the day. I am one of those parents. I have a 10th grader who's going back to school for in-person learning, and she has a combination of teachers supporting her in the classroom, and also some of her teachers are remote. And so it is something we're working to move through, but making sure that our students feel supported in their learning. And, you know, a lot of parents right now are looking at this and seeing what's happening in the fall. Can you give us a little insight as to this is the situation right now, right? You're going to take the summer school day by day. And then in the fall, is the hope that all students and all teachers will be back physically in a classroom? Yes, my hope is that all of our students, all of our teachers will be back in school. However, we're going to follow all of the health and safety guidelines to get us there. And that's what we're looking forward to doing. So what is the problem? Why are some still remote? Is it the health and safety guidelines? Is it personal health issues? What is it? I, you know, some teachers are on medical accommodation. Parents are making decisions about what they think is best for their students at this moment, at this time. The city is moving in a very, very, very positive direction. Our schools have a 0.54 COVID positivity rating and a seven day roll in average of 0.32. So what we know is that our school buildings are safe and we're mm -hmm. looking forward to getting folks back in them. And I know the hope is to have everybody back in a classroom, not to belabor the point for the fall. But if a parent says, I'm not ready yet to send my kid back, or if a teacher says, I'm not willing to be back in a classroom yet, will the option be available to them come the fall? At this point, as far as teachers, the medical, the accommodations expire on June 30th. Mm. And so we're working from that space. And as far as parents and teachers, we're going to continue to have conversations with our community about moving towards reopening. We know the best kind of learning happens between babies, students, and teachers in classrooms. That is the best time of learning mm. that, that we need to have. And the device is a tool. And so we expect to be able to use those tools in our new classrooms as we create our new normal. Yeah, this new normal. Um, I want to turn to a bit of a controversial topic for parents and educators. That's these entrance exams mm -hmm. for specialized high schools. Now, your predecessor tried to do away with the specialized testing. You're picking up right where he left off, citing extreme racial disparities with these admissions. So what do you think needs to happen to level this playing field? I think there should not be any single measure that determines a student's future. Colleges don't do that, um, you know, and, and we know that there are so many ways that students demonstrate their brilliance, and I think that's what we need to do. We need to move towards a multi-pronged approach to admissions into our specialized high schools. So doing away with, I was never a good standardized test taker, just to be first and foremost very honest here, right? So I always felt like there was a little bit of, uh, of a disadvantage for those who weren't standardized test takers but were really good in the classrooms. So are you saying look at the overall picture, the overall student, their extracurriculars, almost like you would for a college admissions process minus the SAT? Absolutely. Let's get our students college ready. And what better way to start than to have a multi uh, faceted way in which we admit students into our specialized high schools. And so my position is simple and clear. So no there testing. Should it, there should never be one single measure. OK, so there can be a test. It's just not going to be the only thing you're going to depend on. But let me ask Absolutely. you about that, Chancellor, because in this age of, you know, us being quarantined and doing remote learning, there's not a lot of opportunity for those extracurriculars that you can base some of this off of. So how do you balance that? 
Oh, but there have been. We've had a lot of remote options. I am also the mother of a dancer who's been able to submit auditions oh. um, virtually. Uh, that's what we're doing with our performing arts schools. And so there are a lot of different ways that students, students, you're right, in the pandemic, we've had to pause some things, mm -hmm. but our students have continued to demonstrate their talents and abilities in multiple ways through in remote schooling we've seen students thrive as well yeah. and so there are very there are a lot of ways that students can demonstrate um their talents their abilities their skills um and and their academics you know you know and so we, we got we have options yeah have I, options. i'm with you on this you know I, i'm all for the multi-pronged approach but just having gone through the process myself when there are certain schools that will only look at that test right so how do you ensure that a school won't do that, that they won't only look at that test if that's still part of the equation? Well, that's a state law, and so we have to work with the state to, to shift that law. Um, that, that, and I would also say that's not a school decision, that's a state law, and yeah. I really know, and I know many specialized high school principals mm -hmm. who are working with us and would love to have multiple ways to admit students into their community. Quickly, before we run out of time, let's talk about Summer Rising, right? This is a summer school summer. opportunity for kids. Uh, pretty exciting. Yes, absolutely. I'm so excited about Summer Rising. Summer Rising is our bridge back to school, but it also is an opportunity to get students back into the building um, and it's an opportunity to change the face of what summer school has been for New York City. And so there will be academics, there will be enrichment activities, we will be engaging in social emotional learning practices. And so we are really looking forward to bringing our students back into a more holistic summer program and welcoming any student and family who want an opportunity to be with us. Uh, Chancellor, before we let you go, it is Teacher Appreciation Week. My parents, they were both <laughs> educators. My mother is retired. She worked in New York. What is the message for the educators during this week, especially after one heck of a year? And thank you for that because my mother's a teacher too and I didn't want to get in trouble. I just <laughs> want to get in trouble. All of New York City's public school teachers who have been teaching in their classrooms, teaching in their living rooms, going above and beyond, learning to use technology in a whole new way. And I'm looking forward to seeing them bring that back in September. I thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I've gotten so much from my own teachers and that's why I'm a teacher today. That's very, right. Very nice. Yeah, you right. can't forget mama. You can't forget and mama. special <laughs> thanks to the teachers this time around. All right. Thank you, Chancellor. So good to see you. Thanks for being here. All right. Here. Take care. Have a good day. You, you too. too.